Hello and welcome to section 8.1.1. I am Mr. Anderson and I happen to be your 12th favorite teacher of all time. All right, here's what we got going. Uh, to start out this, we're just going to do a little bit of review. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of factoring quadratics in this chapter. I'm um, learning all sorts about factoring and the graphing of the quadratic equation, um, vertexes, and, and you name it. We're going to learn a lot this, this unit here. All right, let's go through this little thing right here. Let's look at this and let's review. Um, no, it doesn't quite show up on your page. There we go. Let's review what this is right here. Now, the sum of this shape right here, this shape right here, um, I guess they're calling a Y tile. This shape right here, they're calling an X tile. So this is Y squared, X squared. Here's your Ys, your four Y tiles. Here's four and two more is six X tiles. And here's your eight unit tiles. So this right here is your sum of the thing again. By the way, remember your product would be your x plus 4 and your y plus x plus 2. So if we look at that again here, here's the product of the next one. And they want to use a generic rectangle to come up with the sum. So if we take this, here's our generic rectangle. We set it up with our 6x minus 1, which comes from right here, and our 3x plus 2, which comes from right here. And if we look inside of what this equals, you can see 3x times 6x is 18x squared so on, so forth, so on. Hopefully it makes sense how to get those. We've done that before. What does that all simplify down to? Well, it's your 18x squared plus 9x minus 2. The 9x, of course, came from combining these two terms. Hey, take a look at something here. 12x times negative 3x. Do you notice how that would be a negative 36x squared? And 18x squared times negative 2 would also be negative 36 x squared. That means if these two multiply together equals these two multiplied together, this makes a perfect proportion, which is very uh, useful because we need proportions when we're talking about factoring. All right, moving on. Uh, same page. Moving on to here. All right. On this one, what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to take this equation and we're supposed to draw out algebra tiles to make a perfect rectangle. So let me give you an example. Letter A. I need two x squared tiles, I need seven x tiles, and I need six unit tiles. And then I gotta play around with those until I can make a perfect rectangle. You might notice for letter A, here's my two x squared tiles, my seven x tiles, and my six unit tiles. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video and don't spend more than maybe, oh, four or five minutes trying to do this on your own. Make a rectangle out of B, make a rectangle out of C, and make a rectangle out of D. Go ahead and pause it. All right, I assumed you paused it. Now we are back. So letter B, did you come up with? Your 6x squared tiles, your 7x, did I say 6x squared tiles? Your 7x tiles and your 2 tiles. If you came up with this, congratulations, you did very well. Letter C. How do we do? What does your rectangle look like? If you got a rectangle, you were doing something weird. Because C is not possible for building a perfect rectangle out of. And then letter D. That's kind of a weird one. But, yes, it works. I've got my 2xy tiles here. I've got my 6x tiles here. My y squared tile here. And my 3y tiles. So hopefully that made sense how to do that. If not, you can always go back and review that and try and make your own. But I am moving on. Number 3. Alright, on this one. We need to take these generic rectangles... And we need to come up with what the product is and what the sum is. Well, in my opinion, the sum is much easier. You know, you gotta, you've got this, you add those two like terms together, and you get this one to get your sum. You've got this, 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 and this. They're all different. They all come up to be the same. So as we put together our sums for these, there we go, this is what you should get for that. Make sure you take a look at that. Make sure you understand where those come from. 
Okay. But now we need to put together the product. Well, how do you find the product? Okay, well, we got to look at what do 5 and 2x and 5 have in common? Well, nothing. Well, they do have a 1 in common. What does 6x squared and 15x have in common? Well, they both have a 3 in common and they both have an x in common. Look in this direction. What does 2x and 6x squared have in common? They have a 2x in common. And finally, 5 and 15x have a 5 in common. So here is what everything has in common. If you look at it backwards, 2x times 1 is 2x, 2x times 3x is 6x squared, 5 times 1 is 5, and 5 times 3x is 15x. Hopefully that makes sense where that came from. The nice part is this is a 3x and a positive 1, this is a 2x and a positive 5, which gives me my product, my 3x plus 1, which came from here, and my 2x plus 5, which came from here. Had there been a negative anywhere here, you'd probably have seen a minus sign down here, which is what you're going to run into over on this one. So I'd like you to pause the video very quickly, and I want you to try and do find the product for both B and C. Pause it. I'll be back in 3, 2, 1. All right, I am back. If you did this correctly, this is what you should have got for letter B. Factored out a negative 2 factored out a 5x out of this one, factored out a y here, and factored out a 3 for your 5x minus 2 and your y plus 3. You can always check it by reversing what you did to make sure it works. For letter C, by the way, if you need more time, go back and do it now, but otherwise, here we go, letter C. That is your answer for this one. If you need more time, please go back and look at this. If you have questions on that, come and ask Mr. Anderson. Hopefully that makes good sense to you. I've got to move on and see if I've got anything else for you. Oh, well, here, I know what's coming up next. I'm going to do it right here. You do notice that when you cross multiply, 30x squared. What do you get here? 30x squared. What do you get when you cross multiply these two? Negative 30xy. What do you get here? Negative 30xy. Get the message? Negative 144x squared, negative 144x squared. These are proportions, and that is why this works, okay? That's all this page is talking about is cross-multiplying and how that works. That is what we're doing today. So, <clears throat> um, you had two videos to watch today. You had this one. You had the con video. The con one will definitely help you do the con, but also doing these generic rectangles and putting that all together will help you as well. Um, I'm pretty sure that's all I've got. That is. We will see you tomorrow in class. Bye-bye.